Ethan recorded the amount of rainfall in inches. Let's interpret this data on a number line to help him answer some questions on our report. So I see the following days are listed there. I have a number line. Um, I know that based on doing the problem, I needed an extra piece just outside of 8 eighths. Um, I needed a 9 eighths location, so that's what that one represents. All right, so let's start sketching. Um, on day one, um, the rainfall amount was 1 eighth, so I'll put a dot above 1 eighth. On day two, it's double day one, so we need two copies of 1 eighth, so 2 eighths. On day three, we need 3 fourths. We know that we can combine 2 eighths together to create th um, a fourth, so here would be 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths at 6 eighths. On day 4, it's a quarter inch less than day 3. So day 3 was 3 fourths, so a quarter less than would be 4 eighths. Day 5 is 1 eighth, so we'll put another uh, portion on 1 eighth. Day 6 is 1 half which is the same as 4 eighths. Day 7 is day 5 and 6 combined. I know that 1 half is the same as 4 eighths plus 1 eighth gives me 5 eighths. Day 8 is 3 times as many as much as day 1. So 3 copies of 1 eighth is 3 eighths. We need 1 and 1 eighth for day 9, so we need to go to 9 eighths. Day 10 is a quarter inch less than day 9, so again we're in eighths, so I need to take two jumps to get to a an in, an quarter inch less than at 7 eighths. We have another at 1 half. We have another at 3 eighths. Day 13 is day 11 and 12 combined. Again, 1 half is the same as 4 eighths plus 3 eighths is 7 eighths. And then day 14 is 5 eighths. So we've combined them all together onto a number line chart. The tomato plants should receive 8 inches of water in 2 weeks. What can we say about how much water the plants receive? So we'll need to add them all up. So I have two copies of 1 eighth plus one copy of 2 eighths or 1 fourth plus two copies of 3 eighths, three copies of 1 half, two copies of 5 eighths, a 3 fourths or a 6 eighths, two copies of seven eighths, oops, and I forgot to add this one, plus one copy of nine eighths. Multiplying two times one eighth is two eighths, one fourth, two times three eighths is six eighths, three times one half is three halves, two times five eighths is ten eighths, plus 3 fourths, plus 14 eighths, plus 1 and 1 eighth, or 9 eighths. I can combine some pieces together. I take a look at 2 eighths plus 6 eighths gives me a whole. I take a look at 1 fourth and 3 fourths, and I also get a whole, and I can do that throughout. And ultimately, when I have all of them partitioned together, we get 7 and 5 eighths. Well, a tomato plant should receive 8 inches. We didn't quite have enough water. So Ethan might want to think about watering himself an extra 3 eighths of an inch on non-rain days. Drake made a line plot for the amount of time he spent on homework each night. Drake's parents want him to spend five hours a week on his homework and reading. How much time should he spend reading this week? I noticed that I'm grouped into one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eighths. So we're grouped into eighths. I have one one eighth, three copies of two eighths, two copies of four eighths, and one copy of six eighths. So when I multiply, I'll have one eighth plus three times two eighths is six eighths, two times four eighths is eight eighths, plus six eighths. Altogether, we have 21 eighths, which is two wholes and five eighths left over. He's supposed to spend five hours a week on homework and reading. So two and five eighths hour is spent on reading. That means we need three eighths more of an hour to reach three hours plus two more hours to reach five total hours. So Drake will need to read for two and three eighths hours to reach his five hour goal. We use line plots to record the frequency of data and to help us see what the data look like. Different ways data are organized helps us answer different types of questions. I ran every day for two weeks. Looking at the line plot, what can you tell about the pattern of the data? I could say that I usually run between one and two miles a day, since that is where the majority of the data lines lie. Let's say we want to know how many unit cubes will fit in the box, but we don't want to count them all. We know there are five columns across, five rows back, and 10 cubes high. Determine how many cubes are in the box. Well, I know that each layer will have 25 cubes, since five times five is 25. There are 10 layers of cubes, so 25 cubes per layer times 10 layers is 250 unit cubes. We have 120 cubes in a variety of different storage containers. Which container could we use to pack all 120 number cubes in without leaving any extra space? Cube A is an 8 by 5 by 3. So 8 times 5 times 3 is 120 cubic units we could use storage container A. Storage container B is 10 by 10 by two. That is 200 cubic units. That's too many, we can't use that one. Ooh, uh, container D is a 60 by 60 by one. 60 times 60 is 3,600 times one is itself. Again, way too big. Part C is a three by four by 10. So 12 times 10 is 120 cubic units. We could use letter C. Letter E is a 30 by two by two. 30 times two is 60 times two is 120 cubic units. So we could use containers A, C, and E to store our 120 cubes without leaving any extra space. Multiplying the length, width, and height of a right rectangular prism, we can find the volume, or the space that's inside the container. How can we efficiently find the volume of this figure when I know that the base area is 48 square millimeters and the height is 20 millimeters? I can take the area of the base and multiply it by how many layers we have. Since we have 20 layers, we will take 48 times 20 to get 960 cubic millimeters. If the volume of the right rectangular prism is known, how can we use that to find a missing measure? So I know the volume is 240 cubic yards. I know that I have six layers of equal amounts. I can then take volume, which is area of base times height, and we know the volume is 240. We're unsure what the base is, but we know that there are six layers. So using our properties of multiplication and division, I can take 240 
divided by six layers, so each layer is 40 square yards. How can we find the volume of this irregular figure? Well, notice if I split it down the middle here, I have two right rectangular prisms that we know how to find the volume of each. So looking at the one on the left, I can take 12 times 5 times 15 for 900 cubic inches. I can find the right rectangular prism on the right by taking 12 times 12 times 15 for 2,160 cubic inches. Altogether then, I have 900 plus 2,160 for a total of 3,060 cubic inches for this irregular figure. Find the volume of this figure. Take a moment, pause the video to see if you can do it. Again, splitting it down the middle, I see that I have two separate right rectangular uh, prisms. On the left, I take 20 times 8 times 25 for a total of 4,000 cubic centimeters. On the right, I can take 25 times 5 times 8 for 1,000 cubic centimeters. But because they are combined, I need to add them together. So 4,000 plus 1,000 is 5,000 cubic centimeters. An irregular solid figure can be decomposed into right rectangular prisms to determine volume. And we know, when we just seen, that volume is additive. Some geometry that we need to cover. Identify the coordinates for point A, point B, and point C. Coordinates are when we can identify the location of the point on a plane. We have an x-axis that runs horizontally and a y-axis that runs vertically. Where our horizontal and vertical axis meet in the middle is called the origin. This is where we start when we want to identify a point. So when I look at point A, I must go to the right three units and up three units as well. To find point B, I move right seven units and up four units. So its location is seven, four. Notice I put the x value first and the y value second. Point C, I'm not moving left or right, I'm moving straight up. So that is the point zero, seven. Plot the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. What letter is formed by connecting the points in order? The point one, one means I move right one and up one. One, three means I move right one and up three. 1, 5 is right 1, up 5. 3, 3 is right 3, up 3. 5, 5 is right 5, up 5. 5, 3 is right 5, up 3. And 5, 1 is right 5, up 1. Connecting the points in order, I see that I have created the letter M. A line segment is drawn from 2, 3 to 6, 7. Another one is drawn from 4, 1 to 8, 5. Where could another line segment that is parallel to these two segments be drawn? Name the two endpoint coordinates. Here is 2, 3 to 6, 7 connected with a line segment. Here is 4, 1 to 8, 5 connected with a line segment. I could place a point at 3, 2 or 1, 4 or 0, 5, but one possible segment endpoint coordinates are 1, 4 to the point 5, 8.